What do you remember about this case? I remember dad coming in from work and telling us that this, these two girls were missing this particular afternoon and he with of the, the, a lot of the other people in the community of course went out to look for them and uh, I'm going to tell you what he told me and what I remember about it. Uh, they told the people in the search that if they were found, they would blow the whistle at the mill so everybody would know that they'd been found and to come in. And at one minute to seven the next morning, the mill whistle went off. A long, long blast. Indicating that the girls had been found. Uh, Dad told us, and he had no reason to lie to us, that, that uh, this black lady had told Mr. Alderman, Ben Alderman, that her grandson, who was staying with her, had told her what he did. And so it was our understanding that Mr. Alderman, along with the other authorities, went to his house, picked him up, and they had him in the back seat of the car, according to my dad, covered him with the coat where nobody would know he was even in the car. He carried them back to the location where the little girls were found and showed them where they were. But the bicycle was in the ditch with them. Uh, basically, that's all I know, that's all I was told. Uh, uh, the there was no real, there was a lot of sadness in the community, but I, did, I saw no uprising or running people out of town or, you know. That may have been the case, but I didn't, I didn't know it. And I was, what, 13 years old, and I feel like I would have known it, seen it, felt it if it was there, but it really wasn't. When you, when you learned that a kid was arrested for the murders, like, what was your reaction? <laughs> I, I can only tell you I was saddened. I was saddened uh, more for the little girls than I was for the kid that was guilty because if he did it, he got, he, he got what he deserved. You know, sometimes I think in today's uh, way of handling those cases uh, is cruel and unusual, to be honest. You take a person that if, if he committed such a heinous crime, it takes them 15 years they have killed him. And he's, he's there punished in the cell for 15 years and then they execute him. And the, the lawyers make their money off it. This is, this is one of the reasons I think it's prolonged. Uh, there, he, he, he admitted to the crime, it, apparently because every, I heard no one even question the fact that he didn't do it. He did it. Uh, and there was two little girls there, one six or seven years old, and the other 10 or 11 years old. Uh, was the life snuffed out. They didn't have a chance. They didn't have a trial. They didn't have 90 days to think about it. He just bulged, beat them to death with a drift pin off of a freight car. Yeah, did your father talk to you about what, what was used? Yes, yeah, 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 he did. Uh, Back in those days, they didn't have couplers like they have today on the railroad. They were coupled with, with link pins and drift pins, or links and drift pins. That's how the old log cars were coupled together. And this, this drift pin that Dad said that, they, that he admitted using, in fact showed it to them, uh, was an a instrument, uh, a piece of iron, and I would say it was about that, that big around and about 12, 14 inches in length that had a head on it. They just dropped it through a, a knuckle on the end of the car to tie them together. And that, they say he got it from off of a log car that was stored in that yard back there in the vicinity where the girls were found, as a matter of fact. And what were people saying around the neighborhood? Like, you know, did they say why he admitted to doing this or anything like that? Yeah. They indicated that they as I remember it, 
that he attempted to rape the, the older girl. And he, he beat the little girl first and then attempted to rape the older girl. Now that was the talk. I don't know what the thought has ever proved or disproved. Well, well, I did, and, and it was mm -hmm. that they figured that was that was the reasoning. He he wanted to rape the little girls, and and he, he, he they say he killed a young one first. But now I don't know who knows why they say that. But that was the that was the common talk of the town. And now race has obviously been brought into this, and uh, they're saying that you know. At this time, this race brought into it, but it was no race mentioned. At, to my knowledge, at that time, it was it was not a racial issue. It was just, just mean, just a heinous crime. He just saw an opportunity to, to take advantage of two little girls. And that's what he did. And what do you say to some critics like this is a fourteen-year-old boy? He got the electric chair. Well, it wouldn't it. The fact that he's 14, it's sad that he wasn't raised any better than that. But what else, who else would he have killed if he had that type mentality at 14, if he'd let him live till he's 21? All I can tell you is uh, many other people may have been hurt in the meantime. I think, I think he got just exactly what he deserved. He just didn't get it soon enough. That's you, my personal opinion. What do you want to see happen with this case now that it's been brought up all these years later? It, it's all it's all for money, uh, as I see it. The family, I don't think, legally, legally could could gain financially from this crime if if he's not exonerated. If he's exonerated from the crime, and then the family is wide open to get money from the movie and for this book and. Uh, and, and probably through the state and the county as well. I don't, I don't, I don't know the legal uh, ramifications, but I feel like it's all for the dollar. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, uh, that's my personal opinion, and uh, I agree with I agree with Ruth. Uh, uh, you know, he's been judged, uh, and the little girls, and anyone else that's involved. Uh, God's taking care of that boss.